one of the things I've been wanting to make for a while is a bean bag heat bag. I do have a lot of hot water bottles, but my problem is, is that I burn myself very easily because I have a very high pain tolerance and I don't always notice. So I want something which will be a little bit in between and also something that has a nice weight to it as well. Because especially if my shoulders are stiff, if I've maybe moved in a funny way or I've twisted my neck, I can't very comfortably rest a water bottle on it. But if I have a bean bag that can be heated up, that works really, really nicely. So today I was going to make that out of a few cloths that I've saved. These originally held some toys for my son and I've been saving them for this. So I'm very excited to finally make it. You can, if you want to, if you have a bag where you can just pull the drawstring, just put the beans in it and close it. But the problem is, is that there's too much of a gap with this one. So instead I'm gonna cut part of it off, fill it with beans and then sew it up as well. If you wanted to, you could put a zip, but I don't have a spare zip. And to be honest, if I need to change the beans inside, then I'm just going to unstitch it and refill it. I'm going to be filling this with some black eyed beans, but if you don't have this, there are other things you can use. You could use buckwheat husks, rice, or ceramic beads. Though the one thing to bear in mind with rice is that if the fabric that you're using is very thin, sometimes the rice can kind of pinch through and that's not the most comfortable thing. But if the fabric is thick enough, you're not going to notice. When it comes to filling it up, you don't want to fill this up very, very tight. So while you're filling it up, try and flatten it out. And what you want to try and do is get the balance between having enough in there for it to retain a certain shape, but not so much that it's basically a pillar of beans that you could just knock someone out with. There should be a little bit of give in it. So gradually add in the beans or whatever it is you want to stuff the bag with, and then check that you're happy with how flexible and heavy it is. Once I've put enough in, I'm going to be using some needles just to mark everything. Then I'm going to do the worst stitching of all time across it. And once that's done, I'll fold everything over, neaten up the edges and make sure that everything's very firmly sewed in because I don't want beans to spill everywhere. On a completely unrelated note, this is a potato fruit. We finally dug up the potatoes that would have been growing in our garden and I found out that potatoes will actually grow fruit which is poisonous. I thought that was kind of cool so I wanted to share it. <laughs> but anyway, I'm going to keep stitching the bag. Once that's done and I've done a very very rough stitch across everything, I'm going to take those needles out, then I'm going to take the edges, fold them in, and then I'm going to fold the edges twice just to make sure that everything is nicely tucked away and neat. that's the first bean bag done. I know the stitching is not the neatest, but it won't be going anywhere. If you don't have something like this or you don't have some spare fabric, there are a few different things that you can do instead to get a similar effect. One of the things I do is I keep any of those little bags that you get if you've bought something like a clutch or a small handbag that, fill it with whatever kind of stuffing you want, whether it's beans, rice or buckwheat, then you're going to close the very top pull the cords and then if there's a little bit of a gap left just wrap those cords underneath do a bow and that will do the same job it won't be as neat but it doesn't matter you can always empty out the beans afterwards if you don't even have that then another thing you can use is a sock so just get a clean sock fill it full of beans you can either tie a knot at the top or use a hairband and that's also very nice especially around the back of your neck if you've pulled a muscle there and you just need something which is a little bit more flexible and has a nice weight to it a sock and some beans will do the trick Now that I've made both of them, I should probably show you how to heat these up. The easiest way to do it is just to get a large tray, a baking tray, just make sure that it, obviously it's clean because you don't want to get the fabric dirty. You'll have to unpick everything, empty out the beans, wash it and start again. So just make sure that the edges are tucked in. Once that's done, you want to turn the oven on. Do not put it on the highest heat, put it on a medium or a low heat. Turn the oven on and then leave the door open unless you're sat directly in front of the oven checking it. You want to leave it in there for a few minutes until the bag is heated up. And then once it's warm enough for you to be able to lift up the bag without it being too hot, it's perfect to use. 
For the different bean bags, I like the longer one if I've hurt my shoulders or my neck and I just want something with some heat and warmth and a little bit of weight to it. But I like the square one if I've got a little bit of costochondritis going in. This is normally one of the fastest ways I can nip that in the bud and stop it from getting a hundred times worse. If you like my content and want to follow me on Patreon, that's where you can find my early content, extra content, and see the thought process behind things like my books, cover designs, videos, and artwork. You can also find me on Instagram, but the best place to follow me and make sure that all my new content is sent directly to you is through my website and the mailing list. On the top right hand corner, you put your name, the email you want your new content to be sent to, and that's it. You're done. Ooh.